Welcome to another Extra Butter. What's up with all those singing and dancing cats? We'll talk about the most controversial, most debated movie of the holiday season. Also, what's up with all those droids and the Wookiee? And Han Solo? It's Star Wars, the most controversial, talked about, debated movie of the holiday season as well. And since we're there, let's talk about it. It's award season. So what finished up as being the best movies of 2019? Our expert panel discusses, debates, and chops it up on this Extra Butter. So this is the very first Extra Butter of 2020. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Oh, we got new players too. Ladies and gentlemen, you know I'm loving the wake up call. It's Gavin. Hello. All right, where do we find you online, Gavin? At Gavin Wake Up Call on pretty much everything. Awesome. She is a veteran to television panel circuits everywhere and a longtime guest of this show, Kelly Savannah Deaton. Kelly Savannah Deaton. How long have you been easy. on this show? Have you ever thought about it? A year. Oh, Times. 12 years. And 13. Counts and change. Since uh, I was 18. I'm at TV Marcus Allen for questions, comments, concerns. All right, shall we jump right into it? Let's, Let's do, do it. it. What's up with all these singing cats? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, where do you even start? I guess you'd have to go back to the 80s, right? Yep. <laughs> now, on your radio show, did you discuss the big debacle that Jason plopped Derulo. down when this movie opened? Plopped down? What are you trying to say? Jason Derulo? Different subject? Go ahead. He probably didn't see the picture. Oh, it, he saw the picture. The did Instagram the picture? picture? Oh, that's not what I meant. By <laughs> good point. Good <laughs> catch. No. Uh, however, I did sit down with Jason to talk about the nudity on this set, take a look. Yeah. You, you know, to perform in front of an audience and to go on a world tour, you gotta be in good shape, not only physically to handle it, but you gotta look good too. For sure. With this, you're in that spandex and the Ooh. computers are only gonna add so much of a layer. You gotta look good to begin with. Yeah, nah, it was it was, it was was kind of brutal. You know, basically we were all naked on set every single day. Yeah, you, you look around and you're practically naked with a room full of a lot yeah, of famous yeah. people. And you're sniffing each other's butts, <laughs> yes, it's, it's real. <laughs> Here's my basic review of Cats. You're not gonna find better singing or better dancing True. captured in a Broadway musical adaptation. However, if you have a complaint about this movie, you're the one that bought a ticket to go see Cats. I mean, have you seen the musical, Gavin? I, I have seen the musical and, and I didn't like the musical. Right? So right. when I saw the movie, at first I thought they were gonna make like singing cats. Like, and that would have been kind of cool. Like right. real cats, right. not like human cats. Right, like like real cats with human voices, which that I thought, cool. okay, that would that's a really good idea. But then uh, then I saw the trailer. I and just <laughs> love that Judy Dench and everyone, all these top A-list actors went to cat school to train for this movie. Like, who does that? I right? was a, I was a theater arts major right about the time Cats, the original musical, came out. And I'll be honest with you, like we were forced to say that we liked it just because if you didn't like it, oh, you don't get it. The right. concept is too high for you. No, it's like the most insane, like... I mean, it's a, it's based on a bunch of poems. Like, how, how could that have possibly yeah. had a good story? But, I mean, there's, interesting there's one sure. or two good songs, but, like, overall, though, it's just so weird and trippy and... Yeah, yeah. but if you like the musical, you are going to love this movie because it's like having the best seat in the house to the Broadway musical. And what do you say about Memories by Jennifer Hudson? No matter how bad the movie you thought may be, oh, when yeah. you hear her mm. sing, it, like, washes over you and you think... Hey, this wasn't that bad of a movie. critics that were just sitting there doing this the entire movie. Are you talking about Patrick? Yeah, yeah Patrick Stoner, he's like, uh, no, this. Uh, but then <laughs> that moment hits where she sings Memories and she gets to that final blow of the, the song. And, oh, Niagara Falls. Did yeah. you see it um, when their hands were still uncovered? Like the pictures that went viral all no, over the internet? No, I didn't see the hand thing. They had to re-release Cats again with like new special effects because they pushed it out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't see that. So which version did you see? I, the version I saw was still incomplete. I didn't notice that, but then the last five minutes of the musical, uh, when I saw it, hadn't been finished. So it was just people in motion capture scenes. <laughs> everything, Jason Derulo included, hanging out. All right, so That's see intense. cats at your own risk. Coming yeah. up next, we're excited to talk about Star Wars. Very. Have you seen it? What would you think? Join in the discussion. We'll be right back with that. Don't move. Off to a great start, your holidays were wonderful. It's the first extra butter of the new year, and now time to chop up 
everything that we missed over the holiday season. Uh, joining us, one of my favorite movie critics to talk oh. about movies with oh, on thanks. the radio. Uh, it is, <laughs> yes, thank you. It is Kelly Savannah Deaton, and I get to sit next to her all the time, but a rare <laughs> treat. It's Gavin from The Wake Up. Well, thanks for hanging out. Thank you for, for asking me to come. All right, awesome. so uh, the movies we've got to get to now are the movies that just crushed it over the holiday weekend. Yeah. Let's start with Star Wars. Where do you sit on Star Wars Episode Nine? It's great. I, 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 and I, I was telling so many friends of mine, fanboys ruin it for every everyone. Yeah. You know, like they 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 were not happy with the last one. They were semi happy with the one before that. So of course they weren't gonna like this one. No. And then they rush to the internet and they write their their terrible reviews. And it's like you guys forgot that Star Wars is supposed to just be fun. Yeah. yeah. It's not a religion. You know, it's not no. it's not history. It's not a religion. <laughs> how, how dare you? It's just a Do not blasphemy. Movie. I second that. It's right. yeah. not a religion. All right. All right, now you and your boyfriend, uh, fiance, oh, do don't not We all three went. <laughs> <laughs> you, your boyfriend, your fiance, we all three and went. the entire club from Saturday night. Uh, <laughs> you're not a Star Wars fan per se. Um, no, but I can enjoy the movies. What it's did you think of this one? It's entertaining, and my favorite part about this movie was Carrie Fisher. You guys, mm -hmm. do you know I'm a huge Carrie Fisher fan, and the fact that they used footage from episode seven, is that proper? Is that correct yeah, yeah, terminology? Yeah, yeah, no, they the repurposed The seventh film, yeah, and put her in this, I think was a great tribute to end out her character. Okay, so can I ask you, did you, and I agree, but did you, did you feel tell? like it felt a little bit like Carrie Fisher Mad Libs. Like when you're watching it, like they were kind of like shoehorning her oh, yeah. dialogue. They were definitely trying to squeeze it in right? there. Yeah, a little bit, but I still think they did a good job with what they had. It was emotional to watch yeah. for sure. It yeah. was definitely distracting though, a little bit. Yeah. What about the scene, uh, earmuffs if you don't want some plot spoils, but what about the scene where we see a young Luke and a young Leia uh, doing the saber battle. I thought that basic. was amazing. I wish I wish that it would have been longer. That was my oh, yeah. complaint with Star Wars, is I wish certain scenes, and I won't say which ones, right. were yeah. longer, because it's like we've been waiting for for decades for right. like certain scenes to happen, and then they happen, mm. and you're so amped, and then they're over. Yeah. You know, I would have sat through a three hour long version of that. You movie. guys Absolutely. would have still been sitting through it now. <laughs> it, it, like. It's true. Why can? Why does the Irishman have so much time on the screen that Star Wars has to keep it in? Uh, I sat down with, if any one person carries this movie, it's probably Daisy Ridley, and I talked oh. to her about it. Take a look. But what is the one thing that you would tell people, be sure to not miss this? Something that if you blink your eye, you're going to miss in this movie. What I will say about the film, and I think it definitely requires a second watching, because my sister came and saw it with me, and we were both like, whoa, so much happens that it's a lot to digest. So I think on second viewing, it'll be easier to, because there's a lot that's going on in the best way, move. So don't go to the bathroom. Okay. Basically. J.J. Abrams, a lot of those fanboys pile on and they blame him for everything that's wrong with Star Wars. Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Star Wars. Uh, and I talked about that. If there were any things he wanted to tweak or change or along the way how things went in production, take a look. At this stage in the game, where we're foaming in the at the mouth at every pixel, every frame of this movie, are you at the same time going, yeah, it's good, but it could have been this? Uh, Look, I'm always thinking it could have been, that moment could have been, I should have, you know, there's always that. But um, I, I, I will say I am, I am incredibly proud to be associated with this movie, to have worked with this unbelievable cast and crew. Uh, there are things in it that I truly love. There are things in it I think, oh, God, remember when we were doing that, what we were trying to do. The ambition of the movie, both in scale and spectacle, but also just in, a, in a sort of emotional heft, was always uh, pretty sizable, and so the, I, I feel like we accomplished what we set out to do, uh, maybe not always the way we thought we would do it. Yeah, that guy. Now, a lot of the fanboys are saying that J.J. tried to make it something for everybody, and in fact, in doing so, it's nothing for anyone. I disagree. No, no, I do too. I'm not, like you said, I'm not a huge fan, and I still thought it was entertaining the entire time, and the way they make these films is so beautiful. Like, it's so pretty. You're like, can I live there? All right, moving along. Let's talk about someone who crushed it over the holiday weekend. If you didn't treat yourself to go see Little Women, oh. why should they? Little Women's easily one of the best movies of the year, oh. and like, if you are somebody who thinks that looks boring and I'm not going to see that, you couldn't be more wrong. It's Agreed. excellent. 
Were you amazed at how contemporary it was? Yeah, and the producer even said it's like Shakespeare meets punk rock. And I thought that was such a good review of this film <laughs> because all the cast, this is the new generation. We need a right. new little woman. The last one was 1994. Yeah. Now it's this time Greta Gerwig. She's a bad. She's right? the real deal. Yeah, yeah she and she is. makes it so that audiences, even you guys, enjoy it. Yeah. You know, it's not just for women, but it's for everybody. Oh, I, I think it's important, uh, especially for men, to see that movie. For sure. Because the perspective that Greta Gerwig puts in the movie is really crucial, I think, for, for men to see. Right. She took the book, she chopped it up. It plays non-linearly, uh, like jumps in and out of different scenes. And your wife, you said, was a literary major? She's an English major. Mm-hmm. And oh. and afterwards, I was asking her, like, there's a bunch of stuff at the end of the, at the beginning and the end of the film where um, it feels very meta. And I'm like, is that, yeah. that's not in the book. I don't remember reading that in the book. She's like, no, Greta Gerwig added that. And it, it's my favorite part of the movie, I think. Yeah. Where it adds a more satisfying ending to a book that even the author hated the ending of. Uh, yeah. I talked to Greta uh, about the relationships with one of her stars, Timothy Chalamet, who she regrouped from Lady Bird. Take a look. What I love about your screenplay, one, I love the direction of the movie, how it's nonlinear, how you're mm-hmm. jumping around. And we start mm-hmm. with these characters as they're young adults. Your scene, the proposal scene, mm. is romantic and heartbreaking all at the same time and awkward and one of your best moments. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, it's beautiful. I knew I wanted that moment. I, when I thought about doing it non, telling the story in a nonlinear fashion, um, part of what I was interested in was almost creating a cubist film so that you were looking at the same thing from two different perspectives, which, which is this sort of philosophical underpinnings of cubism and I thought that that would be a way to examine how people are who they are and with Laurie's character I, I to meet him when he's a kind of a disaffected youth one yeah. wandering around Europe being drunk because he thinks it makes him <laughs> like amplify his pain right um, and then to see the sort of sincerity of where he started with it was just um, it made it more poignant for me you need to see little women if you haven't treat yes. yourself to it all right coming up in a moment from the big screen to the smaller things on the big screen spies in disguise something for the kids if you missed it over the holidays here's why you need to see it before it leaves the theaters this guy small popcorn chops it up next Welcome back, it is Extra Butter in our first show of 2020. Exciting day it is, we have superstars in the house. You know where you love her, Kelly Savannah Deaton, veteran panelist, Gavin from The Wake Up Call, and now welcome making his Extra Butter feature debut, ladies and gentlemen. What's happening, yo? It's small popcorn. (laughs) How sharp do you look right now? You're giving Mark a run for his money. Oh, this guy's got it going on. I look as sharp as a cactus with a tuxedo. Oh, oh. Is what oh, I'm talking okay, about. Okay. All right, so we found him on Instagram. He has his own show. He reviews movies on Instagram. And where do we find you on Instagram, I ask you, as you pop popcorn in your mouth? Large drink, small popcorn. Large drink, small popcorn on Instagram. And you talk about all kinds of movies, right? Yep. Our first one was Meg. Oh, okay. Well, today we're going to have you talk about a kid movie specifically because you seem to be the Pied Piper of kids everywhere. What do you want to talk about? Um. How about Spies in Disguise? Thank you, since that's what we're prepped for. (laughs) Gavin, I'll let you lead the charge on this one. All right, so Spies in Disguise. Tell everybody who doesn't know what it's about quickly. Um, It's about pretty much how, I'd say it's mostly about to show kids how it's not all about being bad, like, because it's a bad guy, you want to kill him or beat him up or whatever, that it's trying to show kids that it's not all about being mean or being bad to them. It can be about being nice and showing that kindness can defeat an enemy with just being nice to them because there could be a background to make them that way because not because being mean or being unkind to them made them that way. And Will Smith is a, is a pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> and who's your favorite character? I'd say um, the science boy. I like him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and do you think kids your age are going to like this movie? Do you recommend it? Yep. It's based on a, a short subject film that caught the uh, attention of the producers and the animators, and I caught up with them to talk about it. I grew up loving spy movies, and we got to make our very own spy movie, and that means we get all the cool action, uh, chases, 
We get cool, sexy cinematography and camera work, but also at its core, it's really a message about two people coming together and how teamwork can save the world. You run to your friends. What's the yeah. first thing you say? You got to see this movie. It's amazing, awesome, and hard to find. Awesome. Oh, I like okay. This guy. I don't know if like, I, know. I want to support you Just as a like you. you're all president. I know. <laughs> I know. Can, can you show everybody your uh, awesome bow tie? Just noticed right there. Look at that. We you got, got a, a merch little... bow tie down there. Please. All right. Any final questions for Small Popcorn, Gavin? Um, sure. One more time. What is your Instagram? Large drinks, small popcorn. All What's right. Poppin'? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a tagline. Hey, Small Popcorn, come back anytime. Yeah, nice good work. Good job, dude. All right, when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about our favorite movies of the year and what we think is going to lead the Oscar charge. You ready? Yep. All right, thanks nice for hanging out, dude. Thank you. All right, we'll be back right after this. Hey, welcome back. About to wrap up this extra butter, the first show of 2020, and we need to talk about what finished strong in 2019 and what we're looking at for the Academy Awards. Yeah. And so, around the table, I just said, "Hey, what's the first movie you want to talk about?" Brad Pitt. <laughs> no, That's not, not a movie. Brad Pitt. Once it's a movie in my life. Yeah, oh, so you want? <laughs> you know, I thought you were going to go Ad Astra. <laughs> no. Although Ad Brad Pitt Astra. made that movie decent. Okay, okay. Oh. Was it Tommy Lee Jones? After you see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, you'll understand why Brad Pitt wasn't really out there to the horn for Ad Astra. No. All right, how do you think it did? Uh, I think the fact that that movie came out in July and we're still talking about it right. proves how incredible that movie really is. Uh, the, uh, most people forget about uh, movies over the summer when it comes mm -hmm. time to Oscar sure. nominations, and people are still talking about it because it's that good. It's one of Tarantino's best. Yep. What I knew, I, I knew this was going to be a huge hit when people my age were leaning into it that remembered the Helter Skelter murders. People your age leaned into it because they love everything Tarantino had done. My teenage sons were into it. All of their friends are into it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, it spans every generation. Women, Everybody men, talked to this. age, doesn't matter. Anything. You'll love this movie, I'm telling you. I think it's one of Quentin Tarantino's best. I think overall, 2019 was a really good year though for film I think like so it, too. coming it's up with the top year. five is hard this year whereas last year it was it was yeah. really easy this year it's really difficult to come up with a top five yeah. but I, I gotta put Jojo Rabbit at number one. Oh, that's what I was loved it too. Yeah, exactly oh, love yeah. that movie. so why did you love that movie it just it, it has all of the feels and and to make a movie that is relatively funny about Hitler Taika Waititi pulled that off and, and it was so good. Kelly caught up with the cast to talk to them about this. That's the first time I heard about this movie and she said, we'll be talking about it Oscar time. Indeed we are. Take a look. We had a pretty casual mm. set. I mean, even yeah. though we obviously the there was a heaviness of some of the mm -hmm. drama in this film, but um, Taika's really playful. Mm. And so I think the director kind of sets the tone and mm. you know then you see kind of how you can and be on set. To, yeah, and what'd you say? You kind of have to stick with that. You kind of have to... Keep up with the level of Taika. Yeah, that's true. Taika's like the goofiest of all of us, so we just yeah. Yeah, we were just catching up all the time. Ah, uh, those kids. You can tell that she has mad love for those co-stars oh, of her. I know, and she was phenomenal in this. Yeah. Why don't people use her comically like Taika did in this movie? I'm telling you, she nailed this role. You love her so much, and oh, I cried so hard. Not to plot spoil, but she I can is see her so good. Getting nominated for supporting for that, yes, 100%. and actress for Marriage Story. I yeah, think it's gonna happen. 100. Yeah. percent There's yeah. a lot of double. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Double noms for double movies with uh, everyone. What about Irishman? Where does that sit in your top five? It's not in my top five. Me either. I know, I know. Just because I it's know. Martin Scorsese, it almost you. should be. It, it almost should be, but I'm, I agree with you. Are it's you a, it's kidding me? It, it is a good film. It's great to, to watch once. Um, but <laughs> Very then long. Um, it has this, this anticlimactic ending. And and I know not sometimes things. Well, real they couldn't life. Tarantino it up. Like no, uh, Tarantino no, would couldn't. just have everybody kill everybody. I, I I I was talking to friends of mine who love it, and they were like, "Well, sometimes real life doesn't have the Hollywood ending." And I said, "Well, then sometimes maybe those stories don't deserve the Hollywood treatment." Oh. Ooh. Whoa! It's like that. I mean, I yeah. would put it in my top ten, but not top five. I would just do that because too. of the cast 
and the star power of yes. Martin Scorsese and the fact that this was a Netflix film is mind-boggling mm -hmm. to me. Netflix is right up there with everyone else right now. Yeah, look, uh, th between that and Marriage Story, I think you're going to have yeah. a very good year. I Netflix, like man. Martin Scorsese films. Like, I'm mad at him because he said that essentially Marvel movies aren't real movies. So I'm still angry at him, yeah. yet he still, that? it's in my top three. Uh, top I said, three! I sat down with Robert De Niro to talk about it and squirmed a little bit. What's the best thing about reteaming with the group that made this possible? Well, it, it, it was a, uh, it was the hope that that we could do it. You know, Al playing Hoffa, Joe playing uh, Russ, uh, Buffalino, and Marty directing it. Um, me being playing Frank, it was, um, you know, we were, it was it was a long haul, but uh, finally, we we got it done. Segwaying on to something that I guarantee the world is going to agree on. Uh, when you see 1917, you're oh. going to know that you've seen a movie oh. unlike anything you've ever seen before. Uh, it is one of the most I intriguing war movies I've ever seen. It's one of the most I integrated war movies. You feel completely immersed in this movie, yet it's not the bloodiest of all no, war movies. No, not even close. I, I, um, it, watching 1917 is like watching a magic trick because yes. they, did, they did only a few takes there are shots that are so long on such an epic scale and you're like how did they do that i don't know how they did that you have to watch it twice because i say watch it once to get the whole shebang and you're in the trenches it's a visceral experience you're it's like a video game you're mm. you're like so stressed out for these two boys it's insane see it big screen that's you right you have to okay now i'm about to drop something maybe controversial in my top 10 i also have the movie us that's not controversial that should be in the top five even nope no! Uh, no. Um, go. You're, you're dismissed. You're dismissed. <laughs> I, I, I didn't like the ending. Doesn't make sense in that. You like, have to be smart. Oh, then you just movie. don't get it. I, I guess don't I get don't. It, yeah, you probably didn't like cats. I kind of, uh, <laughs> no. I kind of felt like that was the like how he ended it was like so there, and it's like no, not so there. I don't understand that. I like, a couple scenes to I like I like the concept. I like that it's a movie that inspires these greater discussions. I know so many people who love this movie who will still talk about it that don't understand it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, we'll continue to develop into the uh, movies that will be nominated once we get into award season, which yeah. we're just about there. Remember, follow us on YouTube, like and subscribe, Extra Butter TV. Have yourself a great entry into 2020. Woo! See you at the movies. All right. Two zero two zero.